Hey, how's it going? And I'm excited to bring you this tutorial on compositing, basic compositing in Lightwave 3D using 2019. I don't want to tell you how many times I've tried to do this video today and had to keep restarting it just because there's so many little tweaks involved with this. And this is one of those kind of features within Lightwave that involve a lot of quote unquote guesstimating and quote unquote eyeballing. There's different ways that you can kind of do this, but this is just the way that I found that works for me. So I hope you find this helpful. What we're essentially doing today is taking a 3D animated character and putting him against a 2D photograph which will give the effect that the character is actually in a real live environment. Now I am using a still photograph for this but you could also use a video instead of a photograph but I'm just using the photograph because it's easier and the particular photograph I have I think works good because I'm trying to show you how to work with shadows and all this. The first step in this process is to have your animated 3D character and set it up in Lightwave the way you'd like it to be animated and appear as if shot from the camera view. So right now I've got my animated 3D running robot and here he is running toward the camera and everything's great. I've already done a video on how to create this kind of animated character so you're more than welcome to watch that. And I'm happy with this except I don't like the ending shot. I want the camera to be closer to him. So what I got to do is make sure I'm on the last keyframe make sure I'm on the camera and then I'm just gonna lower myself here I'm gonna push in I'm gonna get closer to him just by adjusting these controls I want him to almost like he's running by actually running by the camera like fairly close to the camera so I'm just gonna I'm just playing around with this I don't want him to completely exit the scene just because I want a frame of reference if you'll notice if I hit play I've got an animated camera movement here and I don't want that you'll find that if you're doing compositing in light wave that you can't really move the camera around too much because your the ground plane will be shifting and that can cause you a lot of problems so what all I got to do to fix that is go back to the first keyframe and delete that keyframe and just go okay so I'm gonna delete that and now if I hit play I basically have my animation set up the way I want it now if I want to adjust the camera a little bit further I'll wait till I get to the last keyframe here I noticed I was losing some headroom and so I'm just gonna turn my scroll wheel and I'm just going to pitch up a little tiny bit more and so just make sure you've got one keyframe usually your last keyframe you're in the final position that you want lock everything down get the animation the way you want it and this is how I want it and so this part is done so the character is animated he's running the direction I want him to the camera is where I want it and everything else so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually bring in our backdrop. So we go into backdrop. I'm going to go into compositing. I'll go into background image, load image, and I'll find the picture that I want, which is right here. And I took this picture specifically for this tutorial because I wanted to have some shadows coming into the scene. So this is at sunset. And of course at sunset, it's almost near sunset. So it's casting these really long shadows. And so I thought that would be a good backdrop to adjust the shadows for your character. Okay, so now we've got the backdrop in. We need to match the background picture to our camera. So right now you can't tell, you may not notice this, but this is stretched horizontally. So the resolution of my picture isn't matching my camera, my perspective camera. So if I'm on camera and I go to properties, I can switch to real lens camera. And then once I'm there, I can come down here, go from image, and it's gonna grab all my metadata from my photograph. So if I go to image and go to the image that I selected, so it tells you exactly the camera I was using, the resolution, the focal length and everything. I want all this information, except I don't want any more, I don't wanna use the f-stop because the photograph already has blur in it. So I don't need any more blur than I've got. So I'll go okay. And as soon as I click okay, watch how backdrop resolution improves. See how it all tightened up and now that looks more natural of what the photograph really was. It's true to the photograph now. The camera is true to the background. Now my scene might have changed a little bit because the sides collapsed in a little bit. The aspect ratio changed, but I'm, I'm okay with that. So we've got all that. Now I noticed this and this is why I had to keep redoing this video, is when I put the real lens camera on, for some reason it added motion blur. And I don't want motion blur on this, so I clicked that off. So I kept getting blurry pictures, and I was like, why is this so blurry? 
Now if I hit play, you see here he's running, 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 but he's running in the sky and of course we don't want that. Now what took me the longest time to get my mind around was this backdrop image because this backdrop is focused at infinity. It cannot be moved, it cannot be scaled, it cannot be changed. The only, only thing you can really change on it is the resolution and we've already done that. And we could move our, we could try to move our actual 3D object in the scene, but we don't want to do that. We've already established he's running the way we want and he's at the scale we want. We don't want to mess with the character. We can't adjust anything on the backdrop. And I should mention when you're using the backdrop, when you take your photo, when you're considering what your backplate will be, if your character is going to be doing a lot of action on the ground, then you probably want to have at least most of your, your backdrop like this photograph is two-thirds ground and one-third sky and I did that on purpose because I knew I wanted to animate a robot running so I wanted to give him plenty of ground to move on if he was going to be in the sky for some reason flying might have made this one-third ground and two-thirds sky so when you're getting your backdrop image keep in mind what you're going to be compositing into it so that's why this is two-thirds ground is because I knew I was going to be having a running robot back to what I'm saying the backdrop cannot be adjusted we've already adjusted our 3d character the light can be adjusted, and we've already kind of matched our, the resolution of our camera to the scene. So the only thing really that you can adjust is the actual camera. By adjusting the camera, you'll be adjusting the grid. For this to work, all we really need is this character here. If I put him all the way on the first frame, I need him to be anywhere on the ground. And as long as he's anywhere on the ground like here, if his feet are right there, then this will work. So the only way to do that is if I'm on camera and I go to rotation pitch, I can pitch the camera and by doing that I'll be lowering the grid. So tell the point where... Now I want to notice something. I just noticed that I made a mistake because I'm on the first keyframe here. I actually don't want to be on the first keyframe so I'm going to hit delete and go OK. I actually want to be on the last keyframe because I don't want to be adding any animation to this. And I, But I do want to re get this grid down. So what I'll do is now I'll lower the pitch here. And what I have to do is kind of take him back to make sure that he's on the ground. And I can tell he's off the ground right there. He's kind of up in the trees. So I've got to pitch this down. So it's a little weird because you don't necessarily have your frame of reference. So let me take him back now. So right there, he's definitely on the ground right there. And then if I'm on the last keyframe, what I can do is bank this if I wanted to level this up. But you're not going to get, long story short, you're not going to necessarily be able to line up the, the horizon of the grid with the horizon of your photo. But you just have to do the best you can. And the, the priority really is... The number one priority is getting this guy, your character, on the ground. And as long as he's on the ground, that's priority over lining up your the horizon of your grid with the, the background horizon. And there, that should be fine right there. And like I said, you can adjust the bank if you want. So now if I hit play, he's looks like he's running on the grass now. And he should be good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we'll leave it like that for right now. Now I'll put the keyframe, the, the playhead on the first frame. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add a ground plane to catch the shadows. So if I come over here to model and I go to geometry, I go to ground plane, I'll click OK and add. And there's a ground plane. And make sure you're on the first keyframe. If I turn my scroll wheel, I can just scroll, I can just scale this real easily like this. And then I can just push that back like that. Just come down here to the Z and just roll that out like a like a carpet or something like that. Okay, now if I hit play, he, it looks like he's running on this gray carpet. Now the, the thing is, the advantage of doing it the way that we're doing it is now that the grid is set up, once you put the ground plane on, the ground plane is perfectly aligned with the grid and the perspective will match and everything looks great. Okay, and this doesn't need to be super wide, it just needs to be wide enough to catch the shadows. And that's really the final part of this is now setting up our, our shadows. So now if I go into VPR, you'll see that he is the light is casting shadows. So this is this is the part where we, we want to adjust. So one of the problems is our light is not in the proper position. So what we're gonna have to do here, it looks like I created a keyframe there and I didn't mean to. 
let's see. Is that grid chaining? Okay. So I, I did expand this ground plane, but I should have I should have made only done it when it was in uh, the first keyframe position. So let me pull it out there. Okay, give it make it a little bit wider. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna work on adjusting the shadow. And to do that, I'm gonna go back in the VPR for a second. Let me let me pull him closer here so we can actually see his shadow. And of course you can see the ground plane is reflecting him from based on the light. Well, our light's over here and it's casting the shadow over here on the ground, which is the wrong direction. We need the light to be positioned back here, which is off to the right. So what I can do is if I come in here and click on my light, and I go to current top view. Oh, I'm still in VPR. Let me get out of VPR. Let me pull out here so you can see the whole scene. And I want to just pull my camera over here, back here, and turn it around. Whoops. I do this all the time, but I, I always have my... Uh, I don't want to animate that. So... I actually got to be back on the first frame. Okay, and now I can drag my light. Okay, and turn here. And so like that. And I think the light is more, the sun is more off to the side. What I can do is go into light view here. And kind of get a sense of where it, like the sun is. So like I'm right off, it's pretty low to the ground. And what I'll do is I'll pitch up. Like that. So if I'm trying to imagine where the light is in relationship to him, so it's more like coming from here, and then it's I'd say it's up in the sky a little bit more. Something like right about there. That's where the sun appears to be. Okay, so I've repositioned my light to where to match where the direction of the sun is. So now I can go back into camera view, I can go back into VPR, and now I can actually just bring him closer. Okay, so now the, the light's more of where it's supposed to be. We're getting some reflection off the ground plane, which we don't. So we're going to go into Surface Editor here, and double-click here, and double-click there. Let me minimize this for now. So I'm going to leave the ground plane on for now while I'm working on adjusting his shadow. So I'm looking at the shadows over here. So this is, uh, I did an okay job of positioning the light because it is casting a nice long shadow, which is great. But if you look at these shadows, they're really diffused. So the one thing we need to do is turn down the specularity because there should be no reflection from the grass. So I'll just put that at zero and we got rid of that. But again, this is a really hard shadow in relationship to everything. So there's a couple things we can do, but we got to go into the light properties at this point. So I'm just going to go into light properties here. And the one thing I can do is adjust the color of the light. So I'm going to click there on that color box. And I'm going to click here where it says pick from screen. And I'm just going to click, like, get a kind of a yellow color there and change the color of the light. Now, what will really affect the diffuseness of the light is the angle here. And having played around this before, I know somewhere probably about like 10 is going to do that. And it could be that maybe that's too diffused, you know, so you could just play around with this, but like 8. Maybe you want a little bit more definition in his feet. Maybe that's too much. You know, to me, it's pretty subjective. I honestly don't think anybody would be saying, oh my gosh, look, his feet are a little more, you know, so try 12. But I'm just trying to get it to match pretty much with these. I'd say that's pretty close right here. That looks like it matches pretty close, okay? And then I could also play with the intensity of the light. It's pretty bright. Um, so I don't know, maybe somewhere like there. And then w once we're done with doing that, if we go back into the surface editor, we can turn our ground plane off by changing from photo reel to shadow catcher. And there's our, and there's our shadow. And so you, it's really subtle, but it probably would be because he's more in the, but there's definitely a shadow there. And it just adds a nice little touch of realism to the shot. Now you could, if you want, boost it up a little bit. So let's boost up the light and see what that does. So maybe a little bit more light. Maybe that's too much. I don't know. Let me back it off a little bit. But anyway, you could play around with those settings to get it to where you feel it looks realistic. 
And that's all there is to it. It's very basic compositing system. You do have to play around with it for a while to get it just right. And it is very much a guesstimating, eyeballing kind of thing. And a lot of it has to do with the background because the background cannot be scaled back or anything like you can do with most compositing programs. But nevertheless, you can still create a pretty cool scene with just what's in Lightwave. And one of my ideas is principles is, is that if I can do it in Lightwave, I would like to do it in Lightwave. I prefer to do it in Lightwave. Just like when I'm shooting with a camera, if I can get it done in camera, I prefer to do it in camera. So if I can get it done in Lightwave, I'll do it in Lightwave and try not to use any other programs if I don't have to. That's all I had for today. I hope you found this helpful. Take care, have a great day, and I, I really appreciate you watching these videos. I, I really do, it means a lot to me. So take care, and I'll talk to you next time.